In this video, we'll talk about syncing up your lighting cues with LTC and MIDI. We'll look at some hardware options, but I'll also show you how to simulate timecode, which doesn't require any hardware. So that means you can try it at home on HOG4 PC. The setup is slightly different depending on whether you're receiving MIDI timecode or LTC timecode over an XLR cable. If you're going with MIDI timecode, you can connect the MIDI cable to the in port of the back of your HOG, or if you're on a HOG4 PC, you can use the USB MIDI box of your choice. Press Setup, select Control Panel, and go to the MIDI tab. From the drop-down, select your device, whether it's your console or an external USB box. I'm using a MIDI Sport 2x2, which is inexpensive and very reliable. Click Apply. When you first set this up on your PC, you will need to log out and log back in in order for this to take effect. Now press Setup and go to Network. For MIDI input, click on Console, then press Settings. Select the MIDI Timecode tab. Click on View Timecode Toolbar so that we can see timecode while it's running. For the format, select whichever frame rate your timecode source has been generated with. A common one in those states is SMPTE. The regenerate and jump options have to do with whether you'd like the console to simulate timecode when your external timecode stops. I generally don't do this because on tour, timecode starts and stops between almost every song. The simulation jumps allow you to start the console's simulated timecode at any point. Since you can't fast forward or rewind the simulation, this is actually quite handy. I want to keep one at the zero mark so I can always start from the beginning. If your time code started at one hour in, you might set one of these simulation jumps to one hour. It's handy to know that these settings are also available to you to change at any time by clicking the clapperboard icon at the top of the time code bar. If you're using LTC input, plug the XLR cable into the back of your console or into your USB timecode widget. The widget can also be plugged into a computer running HOG4 PC or a DP8000. Press Setup and select Network. LTC timecode is managed by the DP8000 software process, so select the processor and hit Settings. Go to Timecode Widgets and select yours from the dropdown. You'll also want to click the View Timecode Toolbar icon so you can follow the LTC feed and access the settings. This is where you'll see the real timecode coming into your console. Remember that timecode needs to be nice and loud. A low volume won't be read by the console. Regardless of where your timecode is coming in from, the next thing you'll want to configure is the timecode setting for the queue list or lists that you want to timecode. In the queue list view, select Options. Pick the physical source of your timecode from the drop-down menu. Click Enable Timecode, and then choose whether or not you want the console to only trigger as timecode moves forward. If you're going to be rewinding your physical timecode, don't select this. By the way, if you know you're doing the type of show where most or all of your queue lists are timecoded, you might want to set this as the default in the queue list tab of the preferences window. Back in your main queue list window, notice that you can also enable or disable timecode right from this button. When you're ready to associate timecode with each of your queues, those timeframes will be entered in the wait cell for each queue. You can even manually enter them in if you know the times. The format is hours slash minutes slash seconds dot frames. Alternatively, you could use the learn timing function and play along with the incoming SMPTE. If I was to turn this on and then run the timecode physically into my console and then play back cues with the music, the console would record the timecode moment of each go in the wait column for me. We can also do the exact same thing by simulating. In the timecode toolbar, click simulate. If I click Go, the console will start generating timecode for me. Click Go again, and it will pause. If I want to reset this to the beginning or any other time point of my choosing, that's where those jump options come in handy. I'll click zero, and I'm reset. Now I'll click Learn Timing, then I'll simulate my timecode and play along on the console. After you've played the cues, stop the simulation and be sure to turn off Learn Timing so you don't accidentally record over these. 
In the wait column, I can see all of my timecode marks based off of when I played these cues in the simulation. Now, anytime timecode gets to these points, my cues will trigger. Again, you can test this playback with real timecode or simulated timecode. I'm going to reset my simulation and press go. Now all of my cues are being triggered by timecode. If any of these times look wrong, you can just grab the cell and type in the appropriate mark. Another handy trick, if you need to offset a range of cues forwards or backwards, you can select them in order from the wait column, hit set, and type in the new value for the first cue. Let's say we move it two seconds later. The console will automatically add two seconds to the other cues in your selection. This is also super handy when the client decides to change the timecode file on you after you've set all of the timecode cues. Since the hog bases timecode triggers off individual cue lists, it can sometimes be time consuming to set up triggers on songs where you're using multiple sequences. Let's say for this example that I also have a chase that I need to trigger during the song. Instead of timecoding that chase, I prefer to use comment macros to run the triggers. So let's say we want to start the chase at the same moment that we start Q3. Here from the dropdown, I'll select GL for go cue list and type 4 since that's the list number of my chase. I personally prefer go list and not go master, only because if I end up moving my cue lists around, a go master macro won't update for the move and could trigger the wrong list. Another benefit of GL is that my cue list can just live in the cue list directory and still be triggered, which I might do if I need to free up some masters. And while we're talking about these cue list macros, take a look further down the list and you'll see some other timecode related macros, like the option to enable or disable timecode, and even options to disable all other timecodes on other cue lists. Remember, if you do use the timecode macros, enter the cue list number after the text.